Hey, Junpei, you got a minute? Hmm? Here, take this. A bookmark? What is this for? Uh, do you want me to read a book? I found it in between some of the cushions on the sofa. Pretty sure it ain't gonna be any help to us, but I figured we might as well hang on to it anyway. Then why don't you hold on to it? <laughs> you know what I hate most in the world? I got four things. Hope, faith, love, and luck. Hope, faith, love, and luck? Damn straight. And you hate these things? Yeah, you got a problem with that? Uh, not really, but... What does a bookmark have to do with any of that? Well, see, each leaf on the four-leaf clover has a meaning to it, okay? And that meaning is pretty much those four words. It's like a flower language. Well, I guess it's not a flower, is it? So, leaf language, I guess? Yeah, you could call them leaf words. Leaf words. Hope, faith, love, and luck. The meaning of the leaves on a four-leaf clover. So, yeah, I want you to take it, okay? Just touching it gives me the creeps. Take the damn thing, all right? Here. All right, sure, I'll take it. Oh, man, I feel a lot better now. That thing was a real pain, you know? Do you really hate those four words that much? Yeah, well, they can all betray you, you know? Hope, faith, love, even your destiny. Well, that's not my only reason. What? That's not the only reason I hate the four-leaf clover. I just can't bring myself to like the number four. What, worried about the four horsemen? Nah, come on, man, that's just silly. Maybe back in the Dark Ages that kind of crap scared people. But this is the 21st century, and I'm a 21st century guy. I'm a little insulted. Then why do you hate four so much? Because it's a half-assed number. Not the best or the worst, that's why. You, what? Nine is a way better number. So what if it's last place, right? At least it's not some lame-ass middle number. What are you... You play? Play? You mean like, gambling? Uh, yeah. Of course. What else would I mean? Um... Uh... In Baccarat, the best possible hand totals nine. They call it Le Grand. Dry ice is just frozen c carbon dioxide, right? Yeah, it, it is. I wonder how warm it has to get for it to, to turn back into gas again. Hell if I know. How is that going to help us anyway? Oh, well, I figured we might be able to use it to get out of here. Carbon dioxide sublimation point is negative 109 degrees. Any warmer than that, and it'll turn into gas. Any lower, and it becomes a solid. Oh, how do you know that? <laughs> Despite my looks, I'm the clean... Oh, <laughs> the queen of random knowledge. Looks bad to mess up when you're showing off. Oh, <laughs> 
Oh, you're so cold your mouth's going numb? Yes, let's fight. You're just doing that on purpose, aren't you? Come on, guys. Don't you think that's kind of weird? I wonder why it doesn't turn into a liquid first. Ah, it is kind of weird. Oh, but it can turn into a liquid. Oh, carbon dioxide turns to liquid if you put it under high enough pressure. But at one atmosphere, normal air pressure... It won't turn into a liquid, right? Oh, that's right. Instead of melting, it'll do what's called sublimating and change immediately from a solid state to a gaseous one. See, that is weird. Water's a liquid between 32 degrees and 212 degrees. So why isn't that the case for carbon dioxide? There's a kind of ice that doesn't turn into liquid when it goes above 32 degrees. Hmm? Huh? I heard about it. Its melting point is 96 degrees. Ice with a melting point of 96 degrees? You mean there's water that freezes at 96 degrees? Yeah, well... You could also look at it as ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. So what's this ice with a melting point of 96 degrees called? I heard it's called Ice 9. Ice 9? Think we should go back? Yeah, I think that's probably best. Hmm? Hey, Seven, what's up? Oh, well... Is, is that a medicine bottle? I got curious about it. Here. Ethylene diamine tartrate? Yeah, that's right. CDT. What kind of... Do you? Do you know about Ice-9? Nine? Ice-9? Nine? Ice-9. Nine. Ice-9. Nine. Ice, ice, ice. That's it. I remember now. That woman, she's on this boat. That woman? Alice! Who's Alice? Come on, the woman who won't melt at room temperature! Huh? You know how the Titanic sank on April 15, 1912, right? Yeah, more than 1,500 people died. Worst maritime accident in history. What about it? Did you hear about the boat that was sent to collect the dead bodies? Uh, I think that was the RMS Carpathia, right? It was a cruise liner, just like the Titanic. No, that was the ship that picked up the survivors. The ship that collected the dead bodies was the C.S. McKay Bennett. The McKay Bennett showed up on April 17th, two days after the accident. It set out from Halifax, a port in Canada, and recovered 306 bodies. The Atlantic that far north was really cold. It would have to be for there to be icebergs and stuff. Anyway, the bodies they pulled out of the water were frozen solid. This isn't a very nice story. So, what happened next? Well, they say the McKay Bennett recovered something more than just dead bodies. There were various bits of stuff floating around in the water. Things the drowned had carried with them, or stuff that dislodged as the ship sank.
One of the things they found was a coffin. A coffin? Yeah, a wooden one. The craftsman who made it must have been pretty skilled. It wasn't just a wooden coffin. It was all wood. No nails, no reinforcements, no gaps in the wood anywhere. The thing was airtight. The crew got pretty curious about what might be inside it and opened it up. I had to get a wedge and hammer it open and so on. Inside. They found a woman. Or, I guess you should say, they found the dead body of a woman. Her hair was thick and black, and her skin rich brown with no blemishes or signs of decomposition. They say that she looked gorgeous, like a goddess. She was obviously dead, but everyone who looked at her said she just looked like she was sleeping. Her skin was so lifelike, she looked like she might wake up any minute. And she didn't. Like the rest of the bodies they found, she was frozen solid. Eventually, the McKay Bennett finished searching and returned to Halifax. The 306 bodies were unloaded and taken ashore. However, it was warm enough that they began to thaw. They say that the stink was horrible. But there was one body that did thaw. And that was... The girl in the coffin. That's right. Everybody thought for sure that she'd melt and start to rot like the rest of them eventually. But weeks passed and nothing happened. Then a month passed, and another. It was summer, and she was still frozen solid. After a while, people started to say she was some sort of miracle. about her started to spread. People came to visit Halifax from all over. After a while, people started to call her All Ice. Alice. Of course, those rumors didn't last long. Why? Well, she up and disappeared. One day Alice was there, the next day she wasn't. They say someone snuck into where they were keeping her and stole the body. With the body gone, the rumors followed pretty quickly. After a while, no one remembered her. You might be able to find something about her if you could find a newspaper from back then, but that's about it. Wait, you just said that she was on this boat. Yeah, I did. Alice has got to be somewhere on this ship. Now why the hell would you say something like that? Because I know. And just what is it you know? What happened to Alice after she was stolen? Alright, tell me. What happened to Alice? Well, around that time, the word was that there was a special black market in New York. All millionaires from all over the world. I've heard that Alice went up for auction there. The person who won the auction was... Lord Dashiell Gordain. You've heard that name before, right? Lord Gordain. Oh, isn't he the guy who bought the Gigantic? The Titanic sister ship? Yeah, that's him. Although, I guess he hadn't done that yet. What do you mean? Gordain bought Alice in 1912. Four years later, in 1916, he bought the Gigantic. And he hit Alice somewhere on the Gigantic. But nobody knows where. He died in 1931. And apparently, he died without ever telling anyone where Alice was hidden. However... 
However, what? Well, he did have one close friend who asked him, Where is Alice? And he said, Alice sleeps in a small chamber past the forest of knowledge beneath the navel of the gigantic. What the hell is that? Is it some kind of riddle? Your guess is as good as mine. So that's it. Whatever you think, I believe it. She's hidden somewhere on the Gigantic. In other words, she's hidden somewhere on this ship. Hmm. Hey! What are you two doing over there? Stop wasting time and get over here! Okay, okay, we're coming. Jeez! Yeah, so, anyway, that's the story. It might be useful someday. Don't forget it. Alice. Huh. That, that mummy, mummy wasn't, wasn't just, just a normal, normal mummy. mummy. They say that she was frozen. The story says that from the time of its discovery all the way through to when it got put on the Titanic. Even though it was carried through the desert, her body never melted. Then was that Egyptian priestess, Alice? Did the water in her body become Ice Nine? No, that, that's nuts. There's no way somebody like that could exist. Hey, hold on. Oh, what's up? Where's Clover? Huh? Oh, god damn it. Where the hell did she go? Ah, uh, okay. J just hold on a minute. I'll go get her. Sure thing. Hey, Clover. What's wrong? Come on. Let's get out of here. <sighs> what are you doing? Did you want to come back here and say goodbye to John? Hey, Clover. Can you hear me? My brother might be dead. Uh, huh? That's why we couldn't find him. If he's dead, I'm going to be next. What, what are you talking about? What's wrong with you? It's in my pocket somewhere. Uh, ah, here it is. A four-leaf clover. Hey, did you know? Each leaf means something. Hope, faith, love, and luck. That's what a four-leaf clover stands for. Take it. Use it as a good luck charm. Listen to me, clover. No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. You have to remember what's most important, and that's to have faith and to have love. If you can remember all of those, that'll bring you good luck. <laughs> Snake, I, I mean, your brother, he's not dead. He's alive somewhere, I, I'm sure of it. You've just gotta believe in that. Thank you. Thank you. Now come on. Seven's waiting for us at the exit. Wait. Before we go, there's one thing I want to ask you. What's that? What do you think when you hear the word experiment? Uh, what? Oh. Huh. I guess it was just a coincidence, then. I mean, that you knew about the four-leaf clover. Uh, look, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I don't want to be a jerk, but you are making less than no sense right now. Oh, 
No, no, no. It's nothing. Just forget about it. Oh, don't don't give me that. Uh, you really think I could just drop this? What is this experiment you were talking about? You promise you won't tell anyone? Cross my heart. Really? Really. I can trust you, right? Of course you can. Okay, then. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened on this ship nine years ago. Wait, wait, wait. On this ship? Yeah, this ship. It was an experiment to test some sort of psychic thing. Communicating through these fields that you can't see. Fields that you can't see? Like, think about this. This is John, right? But is he really John? Huh? Isn't this like Locke's socks? Or the ship of Theseus? Um... You don't know? You haven't heard of those paradoxes? No? Really? Okay, well pay attention then. This is how Locke's socks works. Let's say I've got a pair of socks. They're my favorite socks. One of them gets a hole in it. What would you do if that was your sock, Junpei? Well, I, I guess I'd patch it up. Get some cloth and close up the hole. But what if another hole opens? I'd add another patch, I suppose. What if another hole opened after that? Um, another patch, I guess? Well, let's say you just keep adding new patches. Until eventually, the original cloth of the sock is totally gone. Once you get to that point, can you really say they're the same socks you started with? Hmm. Uh, well, that... Hmm. That's... Oh, that, that's tough. So, that's the lock socks thing? Yeah. The ship of Theseus is a lot like it. The ship of Theseus. If you keep fixing the damaged parts of a ship, eventually it ends up with none of the parts it started with. Can you really say that ship is the same one you started with? And what if you took all the old parts from the first ship and built another one somewhere else? Then which ship is the real ship of Theseus? The one you repaired or the one you built with all the original parts? Hmm. Hey, do you think it's the same? What's the same? These guys. Is this John, or is it Lucy now? Uh... John's head and heart are both his. But apart from those, and a single arm, the rest of his body was once Lucy's. We're just like these mannequins. Think about it. The cells in our body change every day. Old ones die, and new ones are born. Maybe part of my arm is made of stuff from a fish I ate once. Or maybe part of your right side is made from a cow you ate. If you take it a little further, those cows and fishes are made from something else too, right? That's how we're all connected. Through fields that can't be seen with the naked eye. Hey, what the hell has taken you two so long? How long are you going to make me wait? We don't have time to screw around. Uh. Oh? What were you two doing?
Was this some sort of secret meeting? No, it wasn't. We were just... Just... Playing with the mannequins. Huh? Let's go, Junpei. Playing with mannequins, huh? Didn't know you were into that kind of thing, Junpei. <sighs> You're a dick. All right, I'm gonna open it now. Is that cool? You don't need to keep asking, just do it, all right? <sighs> Fine then. <sighs> all right, let's get going. Hey man, what's up with you? You're so serious, you know? Can't you sound more happy, you know, get a little excited? <sighs> Not really. <sighs> My brother might be dead. I'm going to be next. Like hell I can. Not after hearing something like that. Oh, pocket watch. Might I take a look at it? Hey, man. What are you doing? What was that about? Why are you looking at me like that? Oh, uh, no, 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 it's not like that. What's it like, then? I just wanted to hear the rest of that story. I didn't get a chance to ask you about it until now. What story? About the experiment, remember? The one you started to tell me in the operating room? You said something about an experiment that happened here nine years ago. I'm sorry, but... I don't want to talk about that right now. I'm just not in the mood, okay? Ah. Uh. You understand, right? I'm just... I keep thinking about my brother. I... I can't stop. I mean, who would do something like that? To my brother? <sighs> I can't forgive them. I'm not going to let them get away with it. They're going to pay for it. I promise. So, so... Junpei, who do you think did it? Well, if what Seven said was right, then there would have to be at least two of them. You need at least three people to open the numbered doors, and if you subtract Snake... That means there were at least two other people. You're right. So, what does that mean? Well, if we just look at the bracelet numbers, we should be able to figure it out. Who could have opened door three with Snake? Well, really, who and who, or who, who, and who? You mean it could have been four people? Well, technically, it's possible. Um, I don't know. That doesn't seem very likely. Why? Um, I'll tell you later. Why don't we just assume it was only two other people for now? Okay, uh, got it. Let's do that then. Then who do you think it could be? Would it be Santa and Seven? 
the digital route for Snake, Santa, and Seven is... Three! Wait, hold on. Are Santa and Seven... the killers? Huh. <sighs> What's wrong? Well, I thought about it, and... That's what I thought. Santa and Seven. If it was two people, then that's the only combination that works. Hey, wait a minute there. Don't you think it's a little too early to be jumping to conclusions? Well, all I said is that those two would have been able to open door three with your brother. There might be other possibilities. Well, what other possibilities? Uh, um... Are you saying you think that it was three or four people? I really don't think that's likely. Why not? Can I borrow your pen and paper? Yeah, here. What's this? These are the combinations for three or four people. These eight combinations are the only possible ones. Oh, I see. Junpei? Yeah? I... I can trust you, right? Of course. Why would you need to ask that? Really? Yeah. So then I should get rid of B, D, G, and H, right? Of course. Just cross them out. And you should take off yours too. The ones with four. So, what does that leave? A and E. Wait, it can't be A. Why? Because June's in that one. There's no way in hell she'd do something like that. Are you sure? I bet my life on it. Okay then. I can cross off A too, right? Yeah. Well, what have we got left? E. Do you know what this means? Everyone besides me, you, and June would be working together. Do you think that's likely? Hmm... If there were four people working together, they wouldn't be very cautious. I don't think they'd try that hard to hide what they were doing if they outnumbered us, right? Well, you do have a point. And besides, if Ace and Seven are working together, they could have easily gotten rid of me when I went to the shower room with them. But they didn't. They didn't even try anything. If they were killers, why wouldn't they? Oh, I see. Anyway, I understand now. It seems pretty unlikely that it was as many as three or four people. Yeah. Then that means there's a good chance it was Santa and Seven. That's how it looks. But why would they do it? Their motive. Have I... interrupted something? Uh... Uh... What is it? There was something I wanted to speak with you about, Junpei. Could you come with me for a moment? Go ahead. Okay. What did you want to talk about? There was something I wanted to check. Yeah? What's that? If you'll excuse me. Hey! What, what the hell are you doing? I'm just checking. No, no, no! Stop! I... Uh, uh... Just as I thought.
What exactly are these pieces of paper hiding in your pocket? <sighs> you switched them, didn't you, when we voted? Um... <sighs> well, I can't say that I care. I managed to get through the numbered door I wanted, despite your mischief. Then, why did you... Oh, simple curiosity. I hope you won't think ill of me for it. Uh... <sighs> Damn. Oh, a hallway. Well, we won't know if we don't open it. <sighs> Not again. Damn. No, wait. We didn't check his pulse yet. Maybe he's still alive. No pulse. Well, he's dead. Damn. If only we knew how it happened. These wounds. I wonder what killed him. It must have been this. These clothes. A captain. Does that mean this guy was zero? Bracelet zero. <sighs> Junpei. It may be wise to find a way out of here first. Yeah, you're right. <laughs>